and it's a snowy day where I am, and it's kind of beautiful. I can look out the window and see just a bunch of snow on the trees, so I thought I'd come on, take a second, and take a break from what I was doing. I have not been streaming. I have not been posting videos. I have not been super active, as you might have noticed, so the topic today is beginner blues harmonica tips, and I definitely want to talk about that. It's on my mind specifically because I'm focused on a course, a beginner blues harmonica course that begins tomorrow. Maybe you missed that announcement in a past YouTube video, or you're not subscribed to my email newsletter yet. You can do that at harmonica123.com. But that's why this topic's on my mind. If you want to learn more about the course, it's four classes. I'll give you a quick overview. It's a Friday and Saturday, this Friday, Saturday, then the next weekend, Friday, Saturday coming up. So these four classes take you through the sort of ranks of beginner blues harmonica. Where do you, where do we start with this topic? Um, and really, it, I'll just tell you that it all starts with getting a little bit of uh, information on the instrument itself, because no one did that for me in the beginning. And I had a million questions about the way the harmonica was set up, the parts, the different brands. So we're going to spend a little time talking about those things before just jumping right into technique and musical concepts that we can latch on to. So before I go any further, again, welcome. If you're just joining, uh, what I will do is... Ooh, vertical live streaming is now here. So I'm going to go into the, um, I guess I'll post it in the chat for now because I don't know where else to put it. But this is the link to the course. If you want to learn more, it's right there in the chat. So I have a C and an A harmonica. And I just want to, in case I demonstrate something, it's either on the C or the A. I've got my notes in front of me for class one and two. The later classes of the course are going to focus more on making musical statements and further, further developing understanding of 12 bar blues. And so those musical statements are happening in the context of 12 bar blues for not just beginners, but way beyond beginners too. But it starts, beginners can begin to do this with real simple statements. So statements being these little phrases, simple, small riffs that you correlate to your chord changes. But let's start, like, let's back up. Let's slow down for a minute. Good morning to everybody who's here. Um, so if you have a, most beginners have a C harmonica. Now, before I jump right in, I will say it's been since 2008 that I released a beginner class or course, something you could download a lesson oriented around all beginner topics. By the way, how about it for this? Everyone asked me about this sweatshirt. I know I'm totally distracted right now. Um, it's not for sale anymore as far as I know. I'm almost positive you can't buy this, but it was gifted to me by Honer uh, many years ago when they were more actively, you know, printing uh, uh, apparel, shirts, hats, and all that. They, they do have a shop, and I'll put that link in the description if I can remember so you can check out what they do offer, but I don't think they have this sweet hoodie anymore. All right, so in your C harmonica, the first thing I, I really want to say is, like, breathing. JP Allen, a lot of you guys know JP from harmonica.com. And JP is a good friend of mine. He was my very first teacher. He was the first guy that I sat down with and tried to figure out um, something beyond what I had discovered, which would have been like, oh, Susanna. So he hipped me to something very important. He hipped me to breathing. Most of what I took from him was related to rhythm and breathing. We didn't work with metronomes, um, and I didn't spend a lot of time with a metronome, although I do recommend it these days to my students. But he hit me to this idea that breath is everything, and, and the more you get in touch with your breathing, the better everything becomes, the easier it becomes to get uh, advanced with bending and all these other topics. So it starts with the breath. Let's talk about breathing for a minute as it relates to harmonica. For me, it's controlled, relaxed, even. These are the descriptors, the adjectives that come to mind when I think about my breathing. Even, controlled, relaxed, long breaths, meaning that often it's the long breath that we can take advantage of, not just the short breaths uh, that we could use in a musical statement like. 
staccato oriented things, but the long breath seems to really connect us to our breath. So I, I, I would say if you're a beginner, focus on long breath oriented things like rhythm and chugs. We'll be doing that in the course. Um, and everything is recorded in that course, by the way. So if you can't make it live, you can still purchase it and then watch the recordings and get the notes. But breath. So, I mean, let's just say you only have a C harmonica. One thing you can do is once you find a breathing pattern that feels good to you on the chords on the bottom, one, two, and three, draw and blow, you can think about other ways to interact with the same breathing pattern by changing the tongue articulations. So let's just talk, let's slow down and talk about that for a minute. That can mean that if your tongue did nothing and you just went, that's no tongue articulation. The tongue is flat behind your bottom teeth, let's say, and it's relaxed. But then the minute you start to raise the tongue and use it against the roof of the mouth, we can say things like yucca, tucka, ta, da, hoodoo, la, 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 anything that makes contact with the upper palate, the hard palate, let's say. So ta, ta, da, da, any of these things, ga, 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 ga would be a, bit, a different part of the tongue, but still makes contact. And you start to introduce these. So you can experiment with these right away. If you're a beginner and you haven't thought of this, it means that we could, we could play something like one of the very be, uh, introductory rhythms that I might show them is just in, in, out, out. So you'll, we'll be doing a little bit of this. On the one, two, three draw, we say in, in, and then out, out on the one, two, three blow. There's that evenness to the breath. And one thing a beginner can do, like I said, is start to bring in the tongue articulations. I've got examples that we'll do in class, but just to let you hear a few of these. So the, the breathing pattern didn't change at all, just to point this out. It was always in, in, out, out, but I got a lot of different sounds by focusing on the tongue. And I think a beginner needs to spend a lot of time becoming, Nick was, and I were talking about this, he raised this point, Nick Clark. They need, you need to be musical right away and, and chords are the way to get there. Rhythm and chords are something that a beginner can use to be expressive, emotional, communicate something musical and work on timing without the complication of, let's say, single notes and bends and all these things. So I think it all starts with rhythm and breath. Um, you quickly graduate to single notes, obviously. Uh, the first thing I did was spend more time, I think, trying to articulate a single note, clean single notes, and learn a song because we all want, we all want to play a song. That's like one of the main component, components of playing music. You don't just want to jam or play uh, accompaniment. You, you want to learn how to play a melody. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Blue Third, Doug, what's going on? Good to see you. Shane, what's up, man? The more I play, how important breath control is needed for rhythmic chords, long phrases, vibrato, tremolo, clean bending. Yeah, well, the breath is like the foundation of everything. And think about, step back from harmonica for a minute and just think about breathing meditation and how you relate to breathing and what happens, like, let's just analyze your breath in general. Okay, Shane and I were talking about nerves the other day. What's the first thing that happens when you get nervous? Your breathing goes. And then what? Then your playing goes to hell and you can't really make a musical statement. You can't. You can't do what you're capable of when, you're, when your nerves take over and your breathing goes out. What else do you know about your breath? Um, right before you go to sleep, you're very relaxed. How is your breathing? It's even, it's, it's very relaxed and it's happening from the diaphragm. Uh, this is how we wanna play harmonica in that state of mind, in that type of breathing where it's just gonna happen naturally. A lot of the phrasing I'm developing is happening by following the cadence of the breath. 
not thinking too much about it, letting it just sort of be what it is, but following the cadence. If I, if the cadence means that, that I want to just do a mix of long and then short and long, I'm paying attention to what is feeling good. And I'm also making sure that I am trying to not focus on the things that don't feel right. So it's all about slowing things down and slowing down your heart rate and your breathing. Let's just play this on a C harp for a minute. Let me see something here for a minute. Let's just see. Let me use a different harp. C harmonica. What happens if you don't use the tongue and you're just, just going to play in, in, out, out? What can you do with that as a beginner? <clears throat> you can play with the tempo. So it might start out real slow. Tap your feet. Tap, tap. That's how I'm doing it now. By the way, you could tap your foot. Tap, tap, tap on one foot. Or I'm using two feet, right, left. This is important. Getting the body moving is another kind of extension of the breath. Really, it's an awareness of it. You're, le you're letting it move you. You're letting the, the sound move you, but it's the breath that's controlling everything. Now you can hear me increasing the tempo, but it's steady, right? It's moving at a steady pace. It's not erratic. It's not going to jump like... I'm trying to keep it real steady. What else can we do? We can get quiet. We can get loud. And we can speed up accordingly. Maybe we get a little faster as we get a little louder. Awareness is everything. So the awareness is developed, I think, by simplifying your playing and slowing down and, and sort of living in a moment long enough, like playing two chords back and forth to where it means something and it starts to influence you and your awareness grows from there. And once your awareness steps up a notch, it has an opportunity to get to another level of awareness. So again, if you're not playing around with dynamic range, which is going from quiet to loud, that's one way to develop the awareness. If you are not really moving the body, you should be. That's another way to develop awareness. If you're not recording yourself all the time, I don't know how many times I've made that statement over the last however many years of being on like YouTube, but the recording process is the most enlightening part of it all. And I know that great players that I am talking with record themselves quite frequently because they want that instantaneous feedback. They want to know what's working and what's not working. What do I like and not like? Beginners, there's a huge tip. Turn on your recorder. It doesn't. I use my phone all the time, but you can do video. You can you can record a simple video and watch it back. <sighs> JP Allen, how's JP? Um, he's he's hanging in there. He's doing his thing. He's still his music is still part of his life, and you know those that know his story know that he's had a he's had a long road here to recovery, and recovery is really a, an ongoing thing. I think in his life, it's just an ongoing part of the process at this point. Um. Posture. Thanks, Steve. And, I, and I'm no great point. Perfect, Steve. All right. You get you get bonus points, stars, whatever it would equate to props for that. Um, posture is an important one. So let's talk about posture. What happens to posture when you're focused on learning something new? It goes out the door because you're so focused on it that you don't realize you may be doing some of this business or big one is just is leaning over we're going to talk about this today in my q a a member of the 
Harmonica 123 membership wrote to me and said, can we talk about tips for uh, uh, loosening up the shoulders and, and, and avoiding, um, you know, I'm having pain, I'm having some issues, and how can I correct that? Are there stretches I could be doing, etc.? It starts with posture. If you're aware of posture first, let's just breathing and posture, like everybody just sit up straight. It feels weird to sit up straight. Feels like you got to make effort to pull the shoulders back a little bit. Now relax that. Let the shoulders drop. But starts by by being chest out and, and upright, right? And but then let that drop. But keep an upright position with your back if you can, but relax. What happens is that then if you start from that perspective first, that awareness, and then you start with everything else. I think there's an efficiency to the rest of it. It's gonna help support the breathing and everything else. So there you go. I think this is good discussion here. Play, and here's another thing. Beginners um, often jump around. Even intermediate players do are guilty of this. I'm guilty, everyone's guilty of this. Jump around from topic to topic. But if you minimize the jumping around and you simplify what you're doing and you master something to the, your best ability before moving on, that means having some sort of uh, ownership. Uh, you really sort of took the role of saying, I want this bad enough to where I want it to come out where I could present it in front of a stranger and not be ashamed or embarrassed. Could be a chug, could be a song that you learned, but t that's what I did first. I sat down and I learned Oh Susanna until, until I could uh, <laughs> head south and impress the folks down there. I don't know, until it really came out like how I heard it in my head. So so taking the time to like play it confidently and own it is huge. I think that we all can notice how much we jump around. Don't do that if you can if you can help it. Cool. Learning to close your nose to stop overinflating. Yeah, some people are, are breathing in when they don't need to through the nose or, or air is escaping when they don't want it to. Really, most of the, the breathing is happening here all in the mouth with the nose being an escape valve at times, but the mouth is also an escape valve. Good morning, Perry Custom Cards. Hello there, sir. Or should I say, I think, I think you're a sir. Because I went to your channel, by the way, after the last uh, <laughs> after the last uh, live stream, because you were on there. Yeah, the neck thing is a big one too, Shane. Thanks for pointing that out. So they're doing this. They're looking down a lot. So what happens when you look down? The shoulders follow, or if you're not paying attention, the shoulders can influence and pull. This looking down thing, just like when you have your phone in your hand and you're just staring at your phone, this is one of the worst things. If you know, you're like me, you've had that upper lower neck or upper back pain from that. So bringing the harmonica, what Shane's saying is bring, being aware of bringing the harmonica to you. This is an A harp. Versus you coming down here and playing it. And so it's an awareness thing. Those types of things are made more apparent to you when you video record yourself. You make some videos and you go, oh, I'm doing that thing where I'm living down here. It's not that you can't do that sometimes, but the awareness will keep you from living there and developing these ailments. So, so I spent a year in therapy, six months, six months. And it literally happened in a way where when one was almost fully healed, the other one went. It was terrible. And it was excruciating pain. I had, I couldn't lift my arm past here. And, and if I tried, it was excruciating. And I had just, the pain was unbearable. So I, sp I did a bunch, this was, you know, back, I don't know, four years ago, let's say. And now it hasn't come back at all. And I can't say it's due to paying super close attention uh, to all these things or stretching, but some of it is. So there are things you can do to prevent it, and it starts with being relaxed, keeping the postures decent to your best ability, 
and beginners learning something that, that like if you're learning single notes, we're just taking these beginner perspectives. And this is good for all of us to think about these things, even if we're beyond beginner. But like if you're learning single notes, remember what I said is how the different ways you can interact with chords. We talked about dynamic range, tongue articulation, same thing. What about clean single notes? Is there such a thing as, as extended depth or a way to think about single notes that that you're that will make you more connected to the single note so that you your tone improves and you're more emotional and all these things yeah there is and it has to do with dynamic range sensitivity the way we connect notes together from one to the other all these things are are ways to to think about single note in a different light so that when we begin playing a melody, we put that intention into it, you know. Now there, there's these subtleties happening. A vibrato came out. That's another layer of of interacting with a single note. Uh, beginners may not jump right into to this type of stuff, but like it's really something that keeps me connected to the piece that I'm playing. Whether it's a melody, or whether it's I'm just jamming out, or whether whatever is happening. I prefer to play standing versus sitting. That makes total sense. I can move and groove better. I think it helps to have, um, to be standing, you're more aware of what the body's doing and connecting to the groove, etc. And for some people, it just puts them in the more of that relaxed state of mind. I will say I've had many, many, many years of playing in a duo setting where we were seated the majority of the time we were just sitting down. And one thing that I noticed was that if I wasn't paying attention to posture and backing myself up against, if I had a back to the seat, if there were arms versus no arms, how that affected the way that I played and did, you know what I mean? Like just become, again, becoming self-aware of, of all of these little things, but you can be straight, like I'm seated right now and I can play that way. And, and I don't feel like there's a huge deficit to be seated versus standing. However, I agree that standing sort of like brings all that out. That's a good point. It just makes you a little more connected and aware of the flow of air and the groove, you tend to get a little more connected to the, the rhythm. So what else is going on? What are, think about challenges that you have. I found that my nose stopped. Oh, we talked about that, yes. What are, here's what I encourage you to do. If you take one thing away from this live stream today, and if you don't mind hitting the like button, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. It really helps me to reach more people. But one thing you can do, if you want to take one thing from this live stream, I would say take the following. Become more self-aware. That's the number one thing. You won't become more self-aware if you don't start to bring in these different things that you're not doing today. If you think you're really self-aware, that's great but you can still build on that. But I think the average person is unaware that they're doing something that maybe they don't wanna be doing, a sound they're creating and they just don't even know because they're not aware of it or, or the way that they're holding the harmonica. These are big things that when we do the beginner course, um, I'm gonna make sure that everyone's hyper aware of, of if you choose to land, like, let's talk about that for a second. If you choose to, to hold the harmonica in a particular way, let's say, and you develop that way and you become a pretty accomplished player, but you eventually notice limitations in your playing and you haven't examined all the foundation first, the way you breathe, the way you hold the harmonica, it's likely that the answer is contained in the basics, in the foundation. I know for me, it took several variations of awareness and changing and evolving the way I held the harmonica, the way I was breathing, to finally get to where I landed on what worked, what I feel like is an ideal approach for me. Like if, like think about it, you can hold the harmonica in your right hand, your left hand, 
you can hold it with two fingers, one finger, you can cup it like this and use the edges. There's all these different ways to hold a harmonica. And if you haven't really thought about the way you're holding it, hold it right now and take a look at the way you're holding it. Like to just slow down, take a minute and look at it with me. What do you notice? I'll give you one big tip. The biggest problem that, that is happening with beginner players, they're eating up all the real estate on the top part of the cover plate. Look at that with the finger. There's no, where are you going to put your lip? No, you're not. You're going to play on the outside. And you're going to sound like that for a long time because you didn't discover this big tip that Ronnie is giving you right now, that your finger's blocking the real estate. The more your lips, and I realize my lips are a little bit maybe bigger than average. They're a little fuller. They need to go over the cover plates to seal it. So think about that. Like really have a moment. The connection, your lips connecting to the harmonica could be arguably next to breath. The single most important thing that you pay attention to that impacts, makes more of an impact on your playing than anything else. So pay attention to it and think about that for a minute. What is it that you're, uh, how can you create more real estate? Well, get the finger out of the way. Well, how do I do that, Ronnie, without losing the, the harmonica and it falling out of my hand? There is a way. Pay attention to the, the lip right here. The lip of the harmonica, um, the lip of the harmonica is a interesting part of the harmonica. And by lip, I mean, sorry, I'm very distracted by this microphone. I want to get it exactly where I want it. Um, and I don't, I like when it's kind of out of view. That's a little bit of OCD moment there. But so how do you utilize the lip where the harmonica is curving up to your advantage? Well, I do it by taking the, pad of the top part, you know, right under your fingernail and making sure that that is very close to the, is against the edge or sometimes on the, the upper part that's sticking up. Now each harmonica is a little different. Um, it's not as pronounced on a rocket, but it's there. It's on almost every harmonica. If it's not on yours, you can still focus on that area of the cover plate. By moving it back, now look at all the real estate I'm opening. But there's still a problem. Where all these juicy notes are, look what's happening. I'm still blocking that. So there's another step that involves, you know, paying attention to the arc of the finger. Now, even as a pucker player, I can get a really big sound. These are all pucker notes. But it all is happening because I've created the real estate on the top part of the cover plate. And when we get into this class, again, these, the beginning steps, the stages where you're just really starting to, to develop um, these basic techniques and approaches to playing, how you hold it, how you breathe and all this, they're, they're vital. I mean, they're so important that I could argue that, that advanced intermediate players, uh, I won't say you should join, you have to join this, this course, but I would argue that advanced beginners, advanced intermediate, sorry, players should jump into the mindset of a beginner every three to six months you should you should sit down and treat yourself as a total beginner and what i mean by that is analyze your foundation like pick it apart like really see what's going on i think that those who sign up for this course who are not total beginners that's the advantage you're going to gain you're going to get to look at you're going to step outside of yourself for a minute and look at yourself as a beginner again and say well what did i miss what 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 am i doing versus the things that Ronnie's sharing that could drastically alter my playing. All right, I'll get off the, uh, <laughs> I'll stop talking. All right. So yeah, it's good to be here and connect with everybody today. Um, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, rocket girl. 
If I, I found if I can pick something to focus on at my eye level, it helps my posture. Excellent. Like for me, it would be looking straight into the webcam versus looking at myself or looking down at the keyboard or whatever. Yeah. That's a good idea. Maybe, maybe what you do in your area where you practice is you put your note chart or whatever. Maybe it's a picture of Sonny Boy Williamson. Who knows? You put that at eye level so that when you're looking at things, that's where you look. That's a good idea. Really good, actually. I like that. I hate my blues harp. It feels like it's about to cut my lip. Changed cover with a big river to no avail. Well, what is the starting harmonica? Oh, blues harp. Sorry. That's okay. Sorry. Blues harp. It's a Honer blues harp. You hate it. Okay. If you hate it, um, the most agreeable and friendly and comfortable would be like a rocket or special 20. Maybe that's my advice. Um, the difference is the rocket does, uh, jet out a little bit, you know, right here with this mouthpiece, but, and the special 20, 20 would be flush, but it's very comfortable. Um, yeah, I mean, think about like a, um, think about Bruce Lee. Think about all any, anybody that's a master in what they do. What happens when you break down what, what they do? I mean, and you listen to the way they talk about what they do, they describe it from this like foundational place of just, they start with these basics. That's what I'm trying to say. And the coolest thing is that when you do this, you're, you're, when you think like this, even as an advanced player, what you're really doing is refining your highest level of ability, let's say, your highest skill that you possess in each category of all the things you do, the best that you can do that thing. You're, you're, when you think of yourself as a beginner again, you're really just supporting and refining what you already know. Sometimes you get micro or even major adjustments out of that approach. I mean this stuff. I, I, and here's how it manifests for me when I'm thinking about harmonica and practicing. It manifests in the following way. I'm playing something, I'm just jamming, and I'm simplifying. I'm constantly trying to simplify what I'm playing so that it can be as deep as it can be at, with the best tone, the best groove, the, the best feel. Um, everything the timing is is there and the more i simplify and keep things very basic the more i can focus on that breath control and feel and all this stuff the more i complicate it the it goes the other direction so i think the majority of people are jumping around topic to topic they're trying this they're trying that and they're over complicating in that sense but they're also over complicating what they're actually working on like if I were working on No Susanna, I wouldn't necessarily try to play the whole song every time. I would just work on. Until that just felt like butter and it was perfect. So let's step back into that beginner mindset. That's my advice today. And, and not, I, I think what happens is we, we are so quick to get ahead of ourselves. You start to make progress on the instrument. You're like, well, I want to try this or what else can I do? Maybe I'll learn this, then I'll learn that, which is cool. It, it, there's something to say for that, but there's something to say for living with less and growing it further. So you learn something from somebody. Yeah, I got that. I'm going to go on to the next thing. Eh, hold up. Maybe not. Maybe you, maybe you can play it better than the, than the version you even learned. But if you're not slowing down to try to do that, then there's a there's a disconnect there. You're not digging, in my opinion, maybe deep enough of a a well, if you will. Analogy being that the the, the deeper it is, the more you've explored what's possible. I try to demonstrate some of this. Notice I haven't left this pattern. I just want to point out what I'm doing. I'm playing this little chord. I'm playing the two hole bend and draw, but I haven't left it yet because I want to feel it out long enough to let it impact me and see where I want to go with it. 
I'm not in a hurry to go anywhere. I want this to sound as good as it can. I can play with it and alter it, but I'm staying on just a limited part of the harp. And then you bring in something new. You bring in a new note, but you let it be, um, you let things slow down. You let it happen in a, at a pace that just feels comfortable for you. And the minute you feel like something is not comfortable or your timing's off, simplify what you're working on. Beginners, let that sink in. Like, simplify what you're doing. Let me just catch up on this chat. How many people here are would consider themselves sound sensitive to it like like maybe one to three percent of the one percent of the population that type of sound sensitivity let me see let me see in the chat anybody you use that to your advantage, but it also will drive you nuts sometimes like when you have that level of sound sensitivity like I do. You'll find it's hard to uh, find living situations that work for you um, to be in certain places where there are certain sounds. And how many people are like that? I think about it right now because since the live stream has started, um, there's an older refrigerator and it's been on. And about 20 to 30% of my attention this entire live stream has been dialed into the sound of the refrigerator. And I'm just praying it turns off. It's been on for a long time. When that compressor kicks off, the nerves just everything relaxes. But one thing I think about when I when I'm as I'm saying this is that I need to learn how to manage that too. This this will kill you if if you don't learn how to manage that because it'll be such a distraction that it just owns you. All right, so what did I miss? Looking forward to the beginner course. Thanks, Renee. Thank you for checking it out. I'm also really looking forward to connecting and, and getting back into these basics. It's going to be fun. I did put it in the chat a long time ago. I don't know if it's pinned or what I did. I will pin it now. Everybody check out the pinned message in the chat. I'm a dummy for not doing that sooner. Um, Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So a lot of people are talking about the rockets that I brought up. They're really nice. They play very well and they sound great. Hey, welcome King Louie. I'm glad you were able to catch this live stream. Thanks for checking it out. Um, I use my laptop often when I'm playing. I noticed I was hunched over while playing. I now prop the computer up a couple textbooks. Yeah, or you can get a laptop stand like I'm using here. Got a little laptop stand to raise it up. That helps a lot. There you go. Nice, Shane. The one contains the many and the many contain the one. The way you play a single note is how you play the instrument. Or as Joe Felisco would have said that, and he has said it to me directly this way. Each note is a symphony. Each note is a symphony. He said that to me at a spa event, harmonica convention many years ago, and it was like, whoa, that's about as deep as it gets. What does that really mean to you, you know? To me, it means exactly what he's saying. You're trying to get that one note to sing in a way that it is as full and vibrant as it can possibly be, that it conveys something even just on its own. When you play one note, it's musical. Rocket Girl hates noise. Yeah, I do too, I'm telling you. But again, we can use this to our advantage um, like, you know, I, I carry, I have earplugs that are always with me every second, by the way. Um, noise canceling, Bluetooth, just, I, there's always tools, but you can use it to your advantage. 
because when you're working on your harmonica, that's what we want is to be ultra sensitive to the sound. Steve says he's tone deaf. Well, maybe you can turn that around. Ted is one of those as well. And King Louis says, I'm quite sound sensitive. So, yeah, people, the sound of people eating, well, that'll get you, sniffing their nose. Yeah, all of it. it. I'm telling you. I'm glad I'm not alone out there. What else is coming? So here's what's coming uh, at the end of the month. Uh, March 30th, RJ Michaud is joining Harmonica 123 for the next guest artist masterclass, we're calling it. The masterclass with RJ will incorporate a couple different things. Uh, really what we try to do in these webinars is get into the harmonica player's mind. And as a teacher and player, I'm focused on extracting harmonica insight from these players with regards to their approach, their technique. I'm trying to really extract some of these tangible examples, but he's also going to be talking about tips and tricks for leading a band. How do you jump in when uh, like he does, he's the master. He's better than anybody in the planet that I know at doing this, taking a pickup band, people he's never met and putting on what sounds like a rehearsed, uh, show. I mean, he's, he's just, he makes it sound amazing. And so it has to do with communication and leading a band. And so we'll talk about that angle from him. Uh, what are some of the tips? Because we all, I think a lot of people that play blues harmonica should want to know some of that because eventually you'll be sitting in. Um, and playing with a band. Eventually, uh, you'll go to a jam, let's say first, or you'll go to a house party, or you'll be hanging out and somebody grabs a guitar. Uh, even that scenario, you want to be able to understand what they're saying and have some input to give back. So that's the kind of stuff we're doing March 30th. Um, you can learn more about that by going to Harmonica123 and clicking on Ronnie's classes or the store button, and eventually you will find that. And it's on sale right now for a limited time, so it's a great time to grab it. So that's what's coming up for March. There could be one, eh, it could be a last minute offering uh, a week prior to that. It's possible, I don't know, but there could be a little sort of last minute, like let's, let's do something here. Uh, so that's what's coming. Heiko, hello, how are you? Thanks for tuning in. Will I be at spa this year? It's not looking like it. And I have never really missed a spa. I'm almost, I'm pretty much at every single spa. Um, spa is the Society for the Preservation and Advancement of the Harmonica. It's a convention uh, that happens once a year. This year it's in Tulsa, Oklahoma. You can go to spah.org to learn more about this great organization. This year I'm on the road and I've got um, a little stretch of dates, a little tour in August that is lining up to just happen right during the week of spa. And it's with the dig three. And I had to think about that for a minute. Do I really want to miss spa? No, I don't ever want to miss spa, but there's some cool festivals and things coming up that we are going to take advantage of. So I, I don't think I'll be there. My favorite harmonica has a messed up read on draw five. So for the past month, I've only been playing everything I can on the bottom. Excellent for holes. Yeah, bottom four holes is kind of helpful and revealing. Yes, isn't that interesting when that happens? Um, well, that's great that you noticed it. Let me just point out, it's kind of cool that a lot of people don't even know it's messed up or it's out of tune, let's say. If it's not playing right, it's obvious. But like when it's out of tune, not everyone notices that but you went and worked on the bottom. That's smart. And um, get that tuned up or get a new harp. You're gonna, you wanna go, you wanna eventually wanna go back to it, but that's smart to go down to the bottom. Working on the, the bottom of the harmonica, let's just talk about that for a minute. When you're working on, as a beginner, often people are just focused in the middle because that's where there are no limited amount of bends and we can find melodies in first position, like go Susanna, et cetera. But we use the bottom as a beginner for chordal playing and rhythm. 
But one thing that beginners don't do a lot of is play melody and other single note oriented things on the bottom of the harmonica based on their limitations and the lack of notes available. And so one of the things I will touch on in this course towards the end is I just want I'll briefly explain what bending is and how to accomplish it, but we won't really work on it. It's just to plant the seed so that you can go get it. Like so many things in your development, it's about you self-discovering the technique and self-discovering much of what you learn because that's when it sticks. If you always went back to, to the tablature you found on a website to play the song, are you really learning and growing? Nope, not in my opinion. You would need to memorize it. How do we do that? We don't keep going back to those notes. We write down the notes in our own handwriting first. Then we work on memorizing small pieces of it. And before you know it, when you do that, it's you can start to really get somewhere. I have a lot of people, not a lot, but a handful of people, let's say, that will tell me I'm learning stuff and I can play and I got a good ear, but I'm, my recall is terrible. Anybody else feel that way? How many people feel like the recall is not there? They learn a blues riff or they learn um, a song and then they got it and the next day it's gone. It's like they're starting over constantly. Anybody feel like that? There's a way to work on that so that you break through to the other side and you don't have this issue of constantly feeling like you're, you're, you have no recall. And for me, it starts with writing stuff down. That's the beginning side of it. The, the beginning part would be you're not actually writing it down in your own handwriting. You're, you know, typing it is the next best, you know, documents for keeping track, but like you need to write it out too. You need to have, so I have, um, adapted, I guess I would say reverse adapted. Like I, when I was only writing tablature for harmonica, I had a method of writing that didn't translate to the computer for typing it out. So when I started teaching my classes, I had to start thinking about how I want to do it. And eventually I landed on the way that I do it now. In the beginning classes, it was a little different. If you ever took those classes, you'll see my tab tablature evolved and shifted in a way that was really friendly for creating notes on the computer so I could hand off the tablature and we can work stuff out. But maybe you should work on one that's, it can be the same if it's possible to do it on the computer. You know what I mean? Because there's certain symbols and if you're doing things that you can't bring onto your computer, then it's a problem. So make sure you have a method that's good for writing and a method that's good for typing. Um, and they should be as close. I use the same the way that I type it is the way that I would handwrite it at this point. It just makes total sense to me. And if you look at any of my live streams or other videos I've posted, a lot of them have tablature in the video description. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, yes, the Dig 3. Would I consider creating a tutorial for Sonny Boy Williamson the second? I'm a lonely man. No one, oh yeah, didn't you, somebody has brought this up to me. I wonder if that was you. No one has done that so far and I'm struggling at some parts. Didn't you bring that up to me? Or am I making that up? In an email maybe? I will consider that. Um, I love that song. I need to go back and revisit it. So if you missed the top of this broadcast, there is a beginner blues harmonica course that starts tomorrow. It runs Friday and Saturday, and then next weekend, Friday and Saturday, and it happens at 12 p.m. Central. Each class runs between an hour and an hour and a half. And there will be individual notes for each class. I'll record every session so you can have it to download or stream after the fact. And the link is posted at the top of the chat for that. I think, yeah. The fridge is still going. Let's give it up, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> round of applause for the fridge. If he were a rhythm section, I could give him props because he's consistent and steady and he hasn't stopped. All right, what else we got? So sometimes I forget riffs. So it starts with writing it down, but the other side of it is the visualization process. 
Like how are you working on managing and creating the architecture of the harmonica and the way you move in your mind? Can you see where you are on the harmonica, but in your mind? That's where, for me, when recall exploded was when I paid attention to that. So try that. fridge is off everybody let's celebrate for a minute uh now could you hear it in the background can anybody hear that thing going oh, it's so quiet now <laughs> okay um hello from the netherlands cool that's cool netherlands where, let us know specifically where you are We need you to tell us something about how we do the harmonica tuning and setting. You know, that's a good question. Um, I never got into it. Some people are, are drawn to it because they're naturally uh, like to use their hands and build things or take things apart. And it just makes sense. Why wouldn't you want to learn how to tune your harmonica and set them up? Not me. And then Eventually, I, I became really spoiled because I had people that would help me out and I never had to learn how to do it. I do think it's a good skill set. There are other people that can help you with that. I'm not the one. I will say that the vast majority, if not all the Honor, if not all the Honor harmonicas that I get are playing great out of the box. I do not adjust these. When you hear me playing these harmonicas, these are stock harmonicas, so there's not a big need for it, but then eventually there would be if something goes wrong or you want to try to lower the gap because you want to work on overblowing or things like that. Okay, Ted, cool. He's using my method for tabs. Awesome. To me, it makes a lot of sense. Well, obviously, or I wouldn't use it, but... You did write it in a comment, and I thought so, about the Sunny Boy song. Yep. Totally remember that. Absolutely. No, I do not open harps. Hell no, I don't open harps. And, you know, I don't need to for so many reasons, and it would be ridiculous to open it because I would only do damage. I would only make my harmonicas play worse if I started to try to do, tinker on with them. And when you first start learning how to do that stuff, make sure you start on a harmonica that is messed up or that you don't care about, that you've written off, you know? So visualization is a long topic, but it has to do with seeing the movement inside of your mind, creating elaborate visualizations, but starting simple, eventually you can ex grow that process of how you see yourself move on the harmonica. You have, you have to do that for yourself. It's different for everybody. And not everyone engages in this, but I know a lot of high level players that do. And I'll tell you what, not only does it help me with recall, it helps me with spontaneity and improvisation. So I can just make a decision. It flashes on the harmonica. I see where I want to go. I can hear the sound in my head and I just execute and it comes out. Great. The fridge is in D flat. I'm going to check that, Steve. I love it. Currently, the fridge is not in any key, which is lovely. I don't have any plans to go to the Juke Joint um, Festival in Clarksdale. But I'm sure it will be fun. But who knows? You know, maybe... Maybe something will change. So on that note, guys, I've been streaming for a minute here, it feels like. I'm going to take off and continue working on the Beginner Blues Harmonica course. I'll put it in the video description, the link. Uh, you can catch this anytime. You don't have to be present for the live classes. You can just uh, watch the recordings if you want. It's a great way to really step back and take stock of where you're really at and make sure that you don't need to spend a little more time on these foundation or foundational concepts that we'll be working on and technique. So it starts tomorrow. 
looking forward to seeing those who are signed up. Y'all make it a great day. And don't forget, RJ Me Show is coming March 30th. Thanks for subscribing to this channel. Thanks for the thumbs up. And I will see you real soon.